हम फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिराइव द जनरल बैलेंस इक्वेशन फॉर द ऑल्टरनेटिंग करंट ब्रिज नेटवर्क सो लेट अस स्टार्ट विद आवर टॉपिक bridges or ac bridges are the most popular and accurate instruments which are used for the measurement of ac resistance capacitance and impedance also they can be used for the measurement of storage factor and power factor now these alternating current bridges they are based on the wheatstone bridge just like the wheatstone bridge it consists of four arms and in these four arms it will have four impedances in wheatstone bridge we were having four resistances where p and q were the ratio arms and uh, these are the known resistances and r is the unknown resistance and s is the standard resistance now in case of alternating current bridges we will have four impedances impedances are a combination of the resistance inductance and the capacitance so uh, we were having four impedances in place of galvanometer we will have a detector and this detector is used for balancing the bridge and in case of the uh, wheatstone bridge we were having a battery which is providing the emf to the bridge network or power supply to the bridge network in case of alternating current bridges we will have an ac voltage source we will which will provide the power supply to the bridge network so if we draw a basic ac bridge network it will consist of four arms so this is an alternating current bridge in which we are having the four arms ab bc cd and da and in these four arms we were having four impedances z1 z2 z3 and z4 okay here we are having a detector which is connected between the arm b and d and between the arm a and c we are having the alternating voltage source now this voltage source it is suppose it is providing the emf e and i is the current flowing in this so i1 is the current flowing in the first arm i2 is the current flowing in the second arm i3 is the current flowing in this third arm and i4 is the current flowing in the fourth arm e1 is the voltage drop in this first arm e2 is the voltage drop across this bc arm e3 is the voltage drop across da branch and cd we are having e4 as the voltage drop so this is the complete alternating a basic alternating current bridge network now let us derive the balance equation for this bridge we know that in the wheatstone bridge the bridge is said to be balanced when the galvanometer shows null deflection means the no current is passing through the galvanometer no current is passing means the potential difference between the points b and d it is zero means the points b and d they are at the same potential so here also this alternating current bridge is said to be balanced when the detector it shows null deflection okay uh, no deflection means the detector it uh, is having uh, like a constant or a frequency of a constant uh, magnitude is uh, heard here 
so b and d uh, will be at the same potential that means the voltage drop e1 is equal to the voltage drop e3 so we can say that the bridge is balanced when the bridge is balanced we will have potential of point b is equal to potential of point d okay that means the voltage drop in arm ab is equal to the voltage drop across da across arm da okay so here we will have e1 will be equals to e3 now if we write the value of e1 e1 is the voltage drop across this impedance z1 i1 is the current flowing through it so the value of e1 will be i1 z1 value of e3 will be i3 z3 so let's put the value in it e1 is what i1 z1 and this is i3 z3 so this is the equation which we have obtain now also when the bridge is balanced and the b and d points they are at the same potential it means no current is flowing through this detector so all the current i1 it will be equal to the current i2 because no current is flowing in this sum so i1 will be equals to i2 similarly i3 will be equals to i4 no current is flowing in this arm so another equation we have got is i1 will be equals to i2 and i3 will be equals to i4 now if we write the value of i1 we know that i1 will be equal to the potential divided by the equivalent resistance now i1 is the current across this okay so the total emf is e divided by the total resistance is z1 plus z2 so i1 will be equal to e divided by z1 plus z2 similarly i3 and i4 they will be equal to total emf is again e divided by z3 plus z4 because when the bridge is balanced no current is flowing through this arm so it can be treated as an open circuit so when it is open circuit z3 and z4 they will come in series with each other so it will be equal to e divided by z3 plus z4 so these are the second equation which we have got now putting the value of this current i1 from the second equation into the first equation and also the value of i3 in this first equation so what we will get i1 is what e upon z1 plus z2 so it will be e upon z1 plus z2 multiplied with z1 equals to e upon z3 plus z4 multiplied with z3 so we have put the value of the current i1 and i3 in these equations let's simplify it e and e will be cancelled we will get z1 multiplied with this z3 plus z4 and here we will have z3 multiplied with z1 plus z2 multiply z1 inside z1 z3 plus z1 z4 equals to z3 z1 plus z2 z3 so z1 z3 it will be cancelled on both the sides so we will get z1 z4 is equals to z2 z3 so this is the general balance equation for an alternating current bridge this equation says that the multiplication of the impedances in the opposite arms it is equal to the multiplication of the uh, impedances in the other arm okay
or we can say that z1 upon z2 equals to z3 upon z4 so here z1 z4 they are multiplied equals to z2 z3 so the impedances which are in the opposite pair of the arms they will be multiplied their multiplication will be equal to the multiplication of the uh, impedances which are present in the opposite pair of the arms so this is the general balance equation for an alternating current bridge network now here z1 z2 z3 and z4 these are the complex impedances means it is a combination of resistance conductance uh, resistance capacitance and the inductance now if we are expressing this in the form of admittance if we want to express this equation in the form of admittance so we know that admittance y is the reciprocal of impedance z so here we are having the equation z1 z4 is equals to z2 z3 if we replace it in the form of admittance it will be like 1 by y1 into 1 upon y4 is equals to 1 by y2 into 1 by y3 so again we will get the same equation y1 y4 is equals to y2 y3 so this is the balance equation when the uh, we are having the admittance okay now in polar form the impedance it is represented as now we are considering the different forms of the balance equation so if we express the impedance in polar form it is expressed as z equals to z and angle theta where z is the magnitude of the impedance and theta is the phase angle So we are having the impedances Z1, Z2, Z3 and Z4. So Z1 will now become Z1, Theta1, Z2, Theta2. Z3 will become Z3, Theta3 and Z4 will become Z4, Theta4. We are representing all the impedances in their polar form. So our balance equation was Z1, Z4 equals to Z2, Z3 replacing it in the form of uh, polar form so it will become z1 theta1 z4 theta4 z2 theta2 and z3 theta3 so what it will be z1 z4 they will be multiplied because they are the magnitudes and phase angle they will be added So through this equation what we are getting we got two relationships one relationship is between the magnitude and one relationship is between the phase angle the magnitude relationship says that the multiplication or the product of the magnitude of the opposite arm of the impedances it will be equal and the phase angle relationship says that the sum of the phase angles of the opposite arm of the impedances they will be equal so here uh, product of the magnitude is equal and here sum of the phase angles So for an AC bridge, alternating current bridge to be balanced, these two equations have to be satisfied. One is the product 
equation and second is the phase angle equation means product of the magnitude of the opposite pair of the impedances that has to be equal and some of the phase angles of the opposite pair of the impedances it has to be equal okay now if the impedance it is having an uh, it is an inductive impedance so for inductive impedance the zl that is the inductance part it is equal to r plus j x l okay and when we are having a capacitive impedance zc is equals to r minus j x c so in that case uh, we will uh, replace our impedance in this form we are going to replace all the uh, impedance like zl will be r plus j xl so we will write the magnitude of zl plus the phase angle in this case we will write the magnitude zc minus the phase angle phase angle will be negative because in the case of capacitance the voltage and the current we will have a lag relationship and here the uh, we are having the lead relationship between the current and the voltage so xl is represented as 2 pi f l ohms and xc is represented as 1 upon 2 pi f c ohms so when the impedances in the alternating current bridges they are inductive impedance and the capacitive impedance we will consider in the case of inductive we will have a positive phase angle and in the case of capacitive impedance we will have a negative phase angle xl is the capacitive impedance uh, reactance uh, uh, this is inductive reactance and this is the capacitive reactants xl is 2 pi fl and xc is 1 upon 2 pi fc f is the operating frequency and this is in terms of the unit of measurement is the ohms so here we studied about the alternating current bridges how we can find out or derive the balance equation for the alternating current bridges and the famous equation which we have got is z1 z4 is equals to z 2z3 that is the product of the impedances of the opposite arms that is equal also we got the relationship between the impedance when they are expressed in the polar forms and when they are expressed in the uh, resistive uh, form that is in the form of a, a combination of uh, inductance and a capacitance okay so uh, both polar and the coordinate form of representation of the impedances is considered here so I hope that this topic general balance equation for alternating current bridges is clear to you. Thank you.